This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rispone. Paradise, Louisiana is brought to you by Circle K, Murphy Law Firm, Veterans Help Foundation, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, Demco, CCA Louisiana, and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament, Louisiana State Parks, Relief Windows, Visit Baton Rouge, and by Farm Bureau Insurance. Welcome to Paradise, Louisiana. Happy Mardi Gras. Here we are, one of the people that are really celebrating over here in Slidell, Lost Cajun. I don't know if you ever heard about it, but people in Slidell and people in Colorado and all over the country, they know about the Lost Cajun. We're going to have a little history of the Lost Cajun here. I'm going to call him Captain Raymond Griffin. <laughs> uh, people in Lafitte and uh, all the... Some of the famous captains down in the feet, some of y'all know about, some of y'all don't know about, but they're all great. Y'all know I'm there with Tofield and, and some of the other captains down there all the time. A captain. Well, uh, they call me the Lost Cajun because I, I left uh, Lafitte after the spill and moved up to Colorado and got lost and couldn't find no home food. And my wife said, it's a crying shame a couple of Lost Cajuns can't get no home food up here. So I opened the first Lost Cajun in Frisco, Colorado, and now we do restaurants all over the country. We got 25 of them. But before I started doing that, I was a fishing guy down Lafitte. I used to own Griffin fishing charters down there, and fish all for the redfish down there. Fished out of Joe's Landing and fished at Tofield and Rip and CJ and Brock and and all them bourgeois and all them good boys down there. And um, they stayed in the fishing business, and I got in the restaurant business so I can feed you. I tell you what, <laughs> you know I've been here three or four times already and, yep. and talked to you about doing this and getting some of the captains down here when we're on the North Shore, yep. everybody want to call it. I, we're going to come back and talk a little more history about sure. you, but let me tell you what, we got two of the most famous and uh, captains in the Pontchartrain Basin. We got Dilly Dudley Vanderbilt. We got his wife, Kim, here with us today, too. Wow. And, you know, I told him you were going to feed him. I used to feed right. the Captain Dudley. Yeah. I'd go with him. I used to bring Buddha and Hawkhead cheese and a lot of stuff. So right. I, I suck up to him all the time. He always <laughs> gives me great information. <laughs> well, and we got Mike, Captain Mike Gallo right now, you know, one of the best teachers around. You got some guests with you here, boys, from CETO. I do. And, uh I just keep hitting on them. I, I, want, I want to get a part of this, but they do, they volunteer and they do a lot with some things close to my heart, with sure. the kids, the wish to fish. Right. Uh, they've been one of the mainstays, especially over here in, in the New Orleans area and the North Shore. Uh, Chris and Colleen, they do a tremendous job. Right. So thank you for inviting them and well, I'm feeding glad all of us. Now, I got to tell you, you said famous a second ago. Now, we all know that famous is not the right word for Deadly Dudley. That's a legend in Louisiana. Right. That's a legend that we're all proud of in the state of Louisiana, and we're glad to have you here. I'm excited to talk to him and ask him questions. Well, I was talking to you a while ago, and uh, we're going to bring him on and talk mostly about the Pontchartrain and opening okay. of the spillway. So, so, so far, we get off too far. Right. Let's hang on. But let me tell you what my week was this week, and what we're going to try to bring you as much as we can and time allowed, but what we missed, we're going to bring it to you later next week. Okay. Look, I had a busy week. I started with a trip to Delorge with the Swamp People. Okay, Frenchy Crochet. Everybody knows him from Gibson, Louisiana. He's been on this, you know, in the last few seasons, he's been on Swamp People. Funny guy, talented guy, very fun to do. And we had Captain Casey Lombard, another young, good captain. Lord Landry, everybody knows Lord Landry yep. from Buris, and now he's in the Delorge area. Unbelievable. Yeah, I black cloud him again. <laughs> but uh, we had a chef that was always food, Leonard Atkins. He's a, he's a facilitator for right. all these people that got camps down there. And uh, he cooked gumbos and potato salad and everything I love. He, it was unbelievable. Then we had the Rod and Wheel girl set that up and wind to Stewart. So she was involved in a lot of things I had. Uh, 
Then they, after I got them over there, they got me to go to Hammond. They had a, another seminar, CCA, the sponsor seminar. Uh, they had Don Miller and then Captain Clint Neomas, Captain Calvin Duvall, Bobby Miller. You talk about a young man knows about electronics and everything else. He has that uh, place, what they call it, anchor management, right there in Ponchatoula. I need to meet them because I'm lost when it comes yeah. to all that. That's yep. why they call me a lost Cajun. Bob Mallon. And then we had the crappie psychic there, Clyde Foster. Uh, I don't have time enough. I'm going to show you all some B-roll. But let me tell you what, I'm going to be bringing them guys on, doing trips with them so you all can see. They're so knowledgeable. They talk good. They give great presentations. So if any of you all out there want a presentation or you want to, your CCA or one of your organizations you want a captain, just get in touch with Wanda. She put that together too. And uh, what was strange, the, the guy that used to handle my account and gave me in trouble with AT&T, Joe Robaldo, he retired. Yeah. I hated, I was so glad to see him, but I hated him. He left three years ago. And he, he opened his brewery over there in Hammond. Let me see what the name of that opening is. I, I forgot the name of it. Something Road, Low Road Brewery. He making beer in really? the ballroom. It's a tremendous deal. So I visited a lot of them things. I made a scouting trip with David and Angie Stewart. And uh, I don't know if time to bring that to you. I had my friend George Ramada. And then the big one, and we're going to cover all of it, all right, the Merge Center, Angling for Autism. Eighth annual, we got the winners. It's unbelievable the fish were caught with all the high water. So we're going to come back. We'll be back right after this. You see all this food while y'all gone? I'm going to snack. But <laughs> we're going to come back and find the history of Mr. Griffin. I'm Brett Favre. As a quarterback in the NFL, if I didn't stay focused, I ended up on my back or worse. Even the smallest distraction could make a good play or offensive drive come to an end. When you're in a car, the smallest distraction could end much more than a drive. It could end someone's life. Just like I refuse to lose on the field, I refuse to lose someone I love to distract and drive them. And you should too. Focus on the road. Don't drive distracted. A message from Farm Bureau Insurance. I can't imagine a day without music. You go downtown, you can find some music. You come uptown, you can find some music. Monday night, they got music. Every night of the week, there's music somewhere. Baton Rouge is a place where it's easy to make friends, it's easy to hear some music, and it's easy to come back. We got the music, we got the food, and we got good people. So with that combination, you can't lose, right? Yeah, but come to lose and know. Add sizzle to your next occasion with delicious local eats from Catering Cajun. From boils and barbecues to tailgates and turnarounds, our planners, packages, and chefs are sure to please. Catering Cajun. For the thirsty, for those who hang out in packs, for heroes, for sidekicks, for those who see the glass half empty, for those who see it half full, for those on the right, for those on the left, for those with nicknames, for those with curves, for people that cycle, for people that recycle, for BFFs, for frenemies, for those with style, for lovers, for families, for big families, for everyone. Welcome back to Lost Cajun. Look, I'm going to let you talk and tell me the history one more time a little bit quicker. <laughs> you, you talk more than me, but, uh, you know, how you get in all the countries and most of these places that you are in right. are, 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 are tourism places. So A lot of them are tourism places, but, you know, it all started because, unfortunately, my late wife, Linda, had cancer. And when she wanted to move to Colorado and we got lost up there, the first one was open in Frisco, Colorado, and there was a lot of tourists up there. And what happened, people from Nashville, Tennessee, and from Amarillo, Texas, and San Antonio, Texas, and Greenville, South Carolina, they were up there on vacation, and they came in and ate the food. Well, first thing is, they didn't believe it was real Cajun food. And then they ate it and went, oh my God, we need one of those in our hometown. Well, this thing has just really exploded off the map. 
We are serving our home food. And, and you, you know what? We, sometimes we forget how good our home food is because we eat it every day. But then people don't get this kind of, they don't get red beans and rice and crawfish etouffee and beignets and fried shrimp, giant dry, fried shrimp like that. So now we're franchising this thing. And I'm going to tell you, last year was a blessing. We sold 177,000 gallons of gumbo last year nationwide. We got 25 of these things in Colorado, Texas, Tennessee, North South Carolina. We're opening 10 more of them this year. Now, this store right here in Slidell is the first store in the state of Louisiana. See, I was a little scared. I didn't know if I wanted to come back to Louisiana and open up a Cajun restaurant. You they found out you missed this place. I did. I missed home so bad. I moved back this last year. I'm so glad to be back with people that talk like me, that eat like me, that socialize like me. And so I'm so glad to be back home right here. I am just, and now I'm learning how to fish Lake Pontchartrain. So I'm going to be paying attention here in a little while because Lake Pontchartrain is whipping my butt right now. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> you, got, you got two of the best in here today. You, let me ask you another thing when it has to do with tourism and economics. I'm going to bet you that 90% of your seafood is coming from Louisiana, yeah. all over the country. It is. I tell you what, it's a hard thing. I call it chasing the seafood. Because, you know, certain times of year, the supply is higher for, the, say, the oysters, okay? Sometimes it's low. Like the crawfish, crawfish all right Crawfish, now. I mean, you know, it, it's tough. Path. It's tough. So I have a company out there that chases it around, okay? And they find out where the best price is for the best quality seafood that I can buy. And, you know, then we got to get it. We got to get it packed. We got to get it shipped. Uh, so, I mean, we're shipping stuff to Denver, Colorado, to Nashville, Tennessee, to Greenville, South Carolina. So it's a tough thing. But here's the deal. Louisiana people know good Louisiana food. And so if you don't put the right food out there, they're going to call you out on it. Not Louisiana people, but then people are learning about it all oh, over the country. They are. You they are, are promoting Louisiana, and that's what we're all about. We are. Let's go back to a captain. Okay. You were known. You had some of the best captains I around did. that worked for you. I did. I crossed the bridge. I had never fished, but I used to see Griffin's God Service. That's right. And I'd ask Tophie and they'd say, oh, yeah, that's good friend he'd been raised raised there yeah, right right so when I mean, you put all that together you were a little bit different you know like Dudley and them they got their clients coming from all over the country right uh, I see Mike has some people the other day from South Carolina and they want redfish and uh, they 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 ain't crazy about trout as much as that good thing because it's been hard to do that's now, right I mean you'll hear the fish report Mike and Dougie have been been hammering them redfish while it, while it happened, but in making their customers happy. Your customer was carpet people. You That's were right. putting 40 people together. That's uh, right. Carpet people to have them in their lodge. That's right. How do you accommodate them by cooking? Well, you know what? Fishing? Everything. Here's what I learned. I learned the hard way early on that I couldn't compete with the guys that had been out there for a long time, like Tofield and Alden Bourgeois and Rip Blank and CJ. All, I couldn't compete with them boys because they were better fishing than me. But I was a better promoter. What I would do, I'd go to all the hotels and all the conventions in New Orleans, and I'd invite them people out, and I would do an all-inclusive trip. It included their fishing, their breakfast, their lunch, their cleaning, the transportation. And so they would be here on a corporate trip, and then they would come back, and they'd bring 15 or 20 people with them. And our peak time before the, the spill and all that stuff happened, we were doing 800 to 1,000 trips a year. We had 10 full-time guides down there working with us, and we had some of the, some of the best guides you've never heard their name Who before. Who took over this when you left? Well, you know what? My, Tofield does a lot of that. Tofield does a lot of that. You know, but I, my lodge would sleep 50 people. Yeah. And we kept all of our guides' boats right there, so it made it convenient for the guys to have all their boats on a lift right there. So I sold it to my, my sister and my brother-in-law. They ran it for about two years. And here's a great thing. A customer, a man that was fishing with us for over seven years, came in and said, you know what? He said, I need to buy this thing. He said, because I'm spending so much money here every year, I might as well go ahead and buy it. But, you know, i tell you what the big thing we did. We always respected the, the marshes and the bayous. We always promote Louisiana guides and Louisiana fishing. We never let these guests keep our limits. We always made sure that, you know, if they were going to keep a few fish, they kept just enough to make them happy. And you know what? I'm very blessed to have been in such a great state with such a great fishery and such good knowledge with local guides that taught me how to do it. I'm kind of like the Ringland Brothers and Barnabas Bay. I knew how to promote it and get everybody excited and get them to come. 
And uh, that's how I was successful down there. It was all corporate business. You know, I, I'd have Ace Hardware and Coca-Cola and, and Pepsi. Yeah, some, no, don't stop mentioning Pepsi, but Coca-Cola is <laughs> one of my sponsors, <laughs> I'll tell you. We're going to say, before I leave, we're going to come back with those, those captains right now. So they're sitting over there watching all this food. Let them come in. Have a good time. But uh, I, I also want to put a plug in. What you're doing right now is my good buddy, Cap Captain KD, Chef KD, he's doing the same thing in a couple of locations right now. He's getting these lodges. He's doing them people. He's bringing a lot of corporate people in. Turnkey, food, breakfast, everything you yep. want. Captain, clean the fish. So if, if you're interested, Seth, your corporation, I tell you, you call my buddy, KD. We'll be right back with those legendary captains here in Ponce Train Basin. Hi, I'm John Jackson, and you know we always say we gather our groceries out the bayou. Whether it's freshwater, saltwater, catfish, redfish, you have tons of choices when it comes to fish in Louisiana. But when I fry fish, there's only one choice, and that's Louisiana fish fry. My new favorite, the Cajun fish fry, has the perfect amount of cornmeal, corn flour, and the perfect mix of spices that really bring the heat. Hey, if you're craving Cajun, go look for the bright red bag at your local grocers. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with Louisiana Fish Fry. When my wife and I started Relief Windows, what our goal was to give a quality job to a homeowner. Everybody's scared of contractors. We wanted to change the mold of what that is. The reason why you should pick Relief Windows to do your renovation of your home, windows, doors, hardy plank or siding, is because of the experience, quality, service of our company. We're gonna show up on time, we're gonna do the job right. The job's not done until you're happy and we're happy. We believe you deserve a quality job. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. The perfect event calls for the perfect spread of authentic Cajun cuisine. And Catering Cajun has the planners, packages, and chefs to ensure your event is long remembered. For weddings, corporate lunches, or anything in between, give us a call. Welcome back to paradise, especially when it comes to eating. Huh? Ooh, man, <laughs> look, guys, look, he, he, he wants y'all to come back. Are y'all fishing all the time? Y'all ready to come back? It's a good thing he's open. Right? Look at this. This is when they first showed me when I come here. Yep. Tell me what all this tastes well, in here. Here's what we do. Half the people walk in the door don't believe it's real Cajun. The other half don't believe or don't know what real Cajun food is. So what we do is we do a little sample platter with seafood gumbo, crawfish etouffee, lobster bisque, creamy style red beans, chicken and sauce jambalaya, chicken and sauce gumbo. So that way we say try it before you buy it. I tell you what, Co <laughs> Colleen was talking about that lobster bisque when she walked through the door. <laughs> Look at that. I don't know if you could, we'll take a picture. That's All unbelievable. Right. We're good. All right, go to work. Cook right, me I'm something. A, I'm going to go cook you something right now. <laughs> Look, I got a voodoo pasta over there for you to try, too. You're going to like that. Y'all have fun. Being Italian, I do love pasta. <laughs> All right. I'm Italian, too, so I'm with you. Yeah, you half Italian. I always told you, you mezzo mezzo. Half is good. Half is good. Good half. Good the, good half. Another half. <laughs> right. Tell you, I forgot about it. I got two Italians on the side of me. Boy, nothing going to be better. Okay. Sicilians. This one's Sicilian. All right, I know y'all tired of me talking about food, but I can't help it, but some serious stuff coming up right now, and it's going to affect the people in the Pontchartrain Basin. It never seems to affect y'all, too. You, I know for sure, go find fish. I remember Dudley, I had somebody tell me the other day the fish in Pontchartrain are moving, you know, and they're going on that northeast shore with the, ahead of that water, that clear water pushing them. I see Chad's got a website, they're catching fish. Since you, I'm gonna talk to you first. You've been fishing Ponce Train a long, long time. This is the third time, this is the third time now in four years, four years two years in a row, yeah. that we opened the, the gates. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, the fact is we just got to move in front of the fish. They're going to come across the lake. They'll get jammed in on corners. They'll get jammed in from basically Goose Point to the, the corner of the causeway because the water will cut them off, and they'll have to stay in that water for a little while. We'll catch them in the canals and Eden Isles. Lake Catherine will have fish. Uh, all, the, all the little corners from Alligator Point and all. And then as, it, as the, the summer goes by, you got to move further and further away. You know, you cross. You know, you, you, you go back into Louisiana Marsh or, or you know, uh, Proctor's Point. So you just move with the fish where they are. It costs you a little bit more to run around. I'd rather fish the bridges than any other place, but you know, you got to do what you got to do for your customers. What about availability of bait and going from live bait to plastics? Well, you know, you, normally this is when we are, are fishing with our plastics all this time of year. Now, as the summer goes by, you're going to have to go to live bait. The regular trucks it in, so they have bait all the time. The bait comes down from Empire, so they'll have it even when the water turns bad and you can't catch it around here. Uh, and they'll have plenty of bait. You know, they, they do have a good source for getting bait in. But, you know, normally this time of year is when we want to fish with Dudleys. And, and, and we'll, you know, I, I, I normally start off in the, bri in the bridges with them or, you know, but with, right now, if you look at it, the South Shore has got dirty water, but it's not from the, from the spillway, it's just from the wind. What's, the, what's your favorite colors this time of year when it's like that, transition? Uh, Mojo Mullet. Uh, I, I would think that's my favorite. When the water's a little bit on the, the dingy side, I, I switch it right is, away. Somebody. That's a, uh, it's like an electric blue with, uh, with green. It's uh, uh, a little bit, I don't know, it's more of a bass type color, but, you know, with a, clear, with a little bit of clear butter. That's my favorite, probably my favorite, a color of all the last few years. Yeah, not, not the black cloud. I use a black cloud down in Venice a lot. I, I do like it down there. But that Mojo mullet on them, uh, and, and, and and Mike Gallo is the one that, that originally threw me and had me make it. So I want to talk to you. You know, I, I fish with a lot of different baits, a lot of different manufacturers, and uh, you were the first one putting on me. Let me tell you a story real quick. After the the hurricane, everybody was saying. It was toxic, you know, Pontchartrain was toxic. You and and, and the other captains, y'all crossed the bridge. Huh? Me and Hill Wagner, Don Y'all crossed the, the bridge and y'all seen them fish was tearing the water up, you know, with a trout or redfish. Thought it was redfish, you know, so all of a sudden uh, we had to do a show and they called me and he didn't have room for a cameraman, so I was cameraman and then dining him, but only one thing, neither one of them had baits, but Gary that, Ju that July, he, I made a trip with him, he gave me bags of Dudley's, all different colors, and he said, they have rides, well, we brought rides, we, we, we had a hard time putting together, they found a boat, I can't tell you, we had 70 trout within an hour and a half, we got on them trout and then went scouting, it was unbelievable. But he's the Indian giver. Guess what? I kept all the bait. <laughs> he kept all the bait. I didn't have no bait, no more dollars, but he, he made up I'm in the boat you, show. I'm going to get you some more, and I'm going to get you some new colors. Okay. I've got some new colors coming out that you're going to like. Uh, I, I'd always, I like to give them away to kids and everybody else. I watched this man give away, go to some people that would, wouldn't catch any of the fish under a cork <laughs> at, at the bridges and uh, at the rigs. And so he... He went, the tide was a little strong. He threw the baits in there, told them how to fish it, told them to get rid of the cork, told them how to fish the bottom, and he sit there and watch those people catch fish. Uh, that's very impressive. Now we're going to go to Captain Mike Gallo. Uh, Mike, there's some people that give great information on the show. I will to put you in the top five, and I, probably number one because I... You introduced everybody to the drop shot. And I'm going to go back and ask you the same question first about all this fresh water coming from the Bonacare. Now, you fish the Biloxi Marsh a lot. You fish all over. I've seen you run. You'll run the Hope there. You whatever it takes. You're going to catch fish. And you usually got them figured out, like the other day. When I fished with Miss Angie and them, we were scouting. But we couldn't oh. find them. And I stopped by you, and the party just left. And y'all were catching 18 limiters redfish and a few other fish. Tell us what you're going to be looking for in the next month. Well, I'll first pay close attention to how long the spillway is open because that will make a difference as to how long it takes before the water gets to us. I heard Dudley say earlier that they expect to keep it open till April. So if it's open for a month, 
It's going to take about three weeks to get here. Um, and then the lake will probably be really dirty and dingy, like Dudley said. And we'll start really looking at those pockets and, and trying to stay. The North Shore seems to get the, the dirty and the fresh water last. So those fish will be confined up on the North Shore. And we'll be, we'll be catching them in the air until that water finally moves and gets the North Shore dirty as well. And then it's into Lake Bourne and Lake Catherine. And we'll follow them into those areas and uh, keep catching them. As time goes on, it dilutes more and more and more. Uh, but it, it may very well be with us until mid-May. And uh, we'll be doing lots of fishing at the bridges. I'm sorry, at the uh, rigs in Lake Bourne by that time. And if we have to go further east into the Biloxi Marsh and even on the outskirts of the Biloxi Marsh, then, then that's where we'll go. I could tell you a real good tool to utilize during this is going to be your Lake Pontchartrain Basin Foundation website. And they have a salinity table on there. And you'll, you can sign up for their Hydrocoast map, and they'll send you an email about every two weeks, and it'll show where the salinity is. So in the summer when those fish are spawning and they need higher salinity water, I use the Lake Pontchartrain Basin website quite a bit to see where that salt water is. And it might be as far out as Fishing Smack Bay, and then that's my first stop in the morning. So I don't waste time looking for salt water and run straight to it. Then, of course, once you get there, you, you, you become a fisherman. You look for clean, moving water with bait fish in the area and scout. Use your popping cork. Use your methods of finding fish, bait jumping, and, and be a fisherman. Catch what you can and sort of read the fish. You know what I mean? You catch a fish that's dark in color, then you may want to use a darker lure like the mojo mullet that Dudley was talking about. You catch a fish and he's really light in color, you may want to switch to a lighter color bait, like uh, opening night will do well. So you sort of read your keys and go from there. A lot of great information always. Uh, you know, I said, you didn't invent drop shot. Now people have been fishing Toledo no. Bend, but you got everybody started. And people fishing the bridges now, they use Carolina rig and say, I, I guess 90% of people fishing the bridges right now use drop shot with live bait or with plastics. He taught them how to do it. Dudley, I know you use it too, but you and I were catching those croak. Uh, you know, I don't use it as much. I'm not a big drop, drop shot man. I, I like to go light sinkers, though, and I like to have a long leader. So it's very similar to what he's doing. My bait's way off the bottom the way it is. You know, I'll go to a quarter-round sinker sometime just to make it move faster and look more like, like it is. Uh, and I, I'm just old style. I started fishing one way, Carolina rig, and I stick with the Carolina rig, and sooner or later we figure them out. So, and I, look, I like a sliding cork. Uh, you you want to catch those trout, you want to smoke them. A sliding cork is the way to go. Fish nine foot deep, <laughs> drawing the bottom, tr bottom trussels. You got a lot of people watching. They think you're fishing another cork, and that's why I know you it. go over there and tell them any difference. <laughs> people fishing in 15 foot of water and using a popping cork. Uh, I got one more story, Dudley. You know, you're talking oh. about fishing. No, I better not. I, I no, might tell bring us to a story. You. you don't lead you know, us on and no, not tell us. No, I done forgot. I love it's your like brain there. You know, my mom used to say when you, I'd say I forgot. Uh, she'd say it must have been a lie. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, were talking about from the first seminars when I started 15 years ago or 16, 17 years ago, they had a seminar at ISC and uh, CCA was putting on and you, you and a bunch of other captain, offshore captains were there. Mike Rabelais, rest his soul, was, was talking right, right before you came on. He was talking about how he fished. And he said, I'm going to tell everybody, I don't fish live bait. You know, I do my TV show. I use plastic. He named the topwater bait. And he says, I use plastic. I use Dudley's exclusive. And I was before you had the swimming baits and just the red gold right, Dudley. Straight, long, straight and I'm fishing it. And, and I will never forget when you came on to talk, and before everybody got, everybody was waiting for you because people, Pontch Train was giving up some big trout. But he, then he said, Mike, thank you for mentioning my bait and everything. He said, but I want to tell everybody here, I take my clients on, but what? When I'm fishing Pontch Train and they biting on live bait, I'm going to have the biggest croaker or the shrimp. 
live shrimp you ever saw. Well, the question was asked if you wanted to go out there and catch up, if you had one bait to choose, if you wanted to catch a trophy trout, and I told him it'd be a six inch, seven inch croaker is what I'd have on my line if I'm looking for just for one thing. Now, where I want to fish, I want to fish with the Dudleys in plastic, and, and it's a little bit different. Like when we go down to Venice, you know, with the bigger the bait, the better. Right. You know, I, I'll throw out a nine inch croaker, and I'm not afraid to throw out a nine inch croaker with it. Yeah, you were that section there. I, I got stories about you and that section that make me nauseated. You know that first trip I made with y'all, huh? In Helicopter Bay? <laughs> yeah, I do remember. I think you we tell me where Helicopter Bay is. I can't tell you that. I'd have to kill you. <laughs> yeah, you had to kill me. All right. Cause there ain't no such thing. Hey, <laughs> right. Mike, thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure What's to be here. What's the last tip you want to give somebody right now coming down here and fishing? You told me the other day you almost booked up. You asked me, you said, when you want to go, you call me, I'll set it up in July or August, next fall. So let's see, you want a tip. I would say I use my phone quite a bit in looking at the Shell Beach buoy. It'll show me the tide. It'll show me which direction the wind's blowing, how strong the wind's blowing. And I can look back at the history of the wind over 24 hours and see how strong and what direction it's been blowing in. And that'll at least help me eliminate some water that I don't want to fish that I know may be dirty. So that's a pretty good tip. Get on your iPhone and download the NOAA buoys, and that'll show you. And there's buoys all across the state, so it doesn't have to be just one. But the more you use them and you go out there and, and see what 20-mile-an-hour wind actually is and what direction, and you'll know which water's going to get dirty, which side of the lake is dirty, which side's clean, and you can at least eliminate some bad water. Give me that website again, the Poncho Train Bay. Uh, that is... The uh, Pontchartrain, Lake Pontchartrain Basin Foundation's website. Micah, thank you. You see what he put in front of you? He's brave. Talk, huh? <laughs> talk about Austin. And we still got gumbo. It's going to get cold. I might make him bring some more. Day 10, we'll be right back. We got a lot of news, and I'm going to bring somebody going to help me with the news and events coming up. We're going to have somebody from SECO. Well, the reason why I would recommend him because he's trustworthy. And I mean, attention and love and respect of who you are, what you are, and the purpose why you came, he honors that. Once you're with Murphy, you got a friend. For the thirsty, for those who hang out in packs, for heroes, for sidekicks, for those who see the glass half empty, for those who see it half full, for those on the right, for those on the left, for those with nicknames, for those with curves, for people that cycle, for people that recycle, for BFFs, for frenemies, for those with style, for lovers, for families, for big families, for everyone. Welcome back to the Lost Cajun. Welcome back, Paradise, to Louisiana. This lady on the right, me. Colleen Offinello. If I did it right, that's a hard name. It's for Italian, Italian name, too. Also. Well, I'm full of these Italians right now. What was your maiden name? Altman. Look, okay. where you come from? <laughs> Originally, New Orleans East. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where you went to school? St. James Major. Well, non existent. We got, we, we got some good news, you know. Paradise, Louisiana, from the start, has been a wish to fish participant and and uh, I don't know what you call it and ain't on the board but uh, I am on a, a committee so we work real hard and y'all been always helping but y'all taking on a bigger chore coming up at CETO. Tell us about this tournament coming up. Well on June 8th at Hopedale Marina uh, we're going to have the Parish Cup Redfish Championship brought to you by CETO to help the kids that wish to fish. Danica runs an amazing organization, nonprofit organization, and we want to continue to support them and do the best we can for those kids. Y'all always have. Now, this is no advertisement, but for what y'all do, tell us about CETO New Orleans. What do y'all do? And a lot of people, Don and a lot of people that we deal with y'all, we call it the AAA of, of, of the coast. 
absolutely right. We're very similar to AAA. CTO New Orleans is a marine assistance provider, and basically for $179 a year, members get access to full-time professional captains that are going to help them should the need arise. We service anywhere from the Mississippi State Line to the Mississippi River, uh, lakes Morapah, Pontchartrain, Bourne, Hopedale, Delacroix, Shell Beach area, and much more. You know, being called a black cloud and many of guides and, and friends that I've been with and had to get towed in, you know, I got to be crazy <laughs> not to belong to sea tow. Does it, does it work if, I, if I'm not in my boat? Can y'all make me a special deal? <laughs> it's good for any boat you own, borrow, or rent. So, and we provide uh, uh, unlimited towing for members, absolutely free, on groundings, fuel deliveries, and so much more. Before I leave here, after we eat all this food, I'm signing me up. <laughs> we'll be right back, and I'm going to let her sit here till I got a whole line of events coming up. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana events calendar and a one-man shoot be coming up now. It's a little bit early if this be the last day in March. Uh, you just shoot over there in the Dental Springs, Watson area. So they're going to be sending their brochures and everything. We'll talk more about that in the next coming weeks. The one-man shoot, the big one, it does for Tulane Hospital. Uh, prostate cancer awareness. Uh, you're looking at a survivor right now, bladder cancer. So big deal on my calendar always. Fun shoot, unbelievable. So we could give you more of that to come up. Louisiana Sportsman Show. Everybody know what Sportsman Show. You there too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. We'll got be there. Booth? Yes, we do. Uh, I'm keep waiting on Tony and them send me my commercial. Tony, shame on you. You know, but I still love you. Y'all do a great job. Y'all promote Louisiana, and uh, thank y'all for keeping these shows going. All y'all sportsmen, that's a four-day affair coming up in, in the middle of this month. The Louisiana Sportsman Show, don't forget it. Tournament report. Lies and luckers over here on the North Shore. You know all about them guys? They fished the East River uh, last week. They had 30 teams. They had 23 teams limited out. All the muddy water in the East Pearl. It was unbelievable how these guys found the fish. They had a warm day or whatever. But a cool front came in. The water was still warm enough from the past week. Uh, Will Moore and uh, Barry Fallow had 12.63. Second place was Charles Dozat and Mark Moore, 12.45. Jay Breeland and Matt Lee were third at 11.91. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Big Bass was Tim Polk and Tim Barrett with 4.37. The next tournament. Put it on your calendar, March 31st, Crawford Landed. I guess you can look them up, their website or whatever, if you want to go on and fish the North Shore, fish their little circuit. They fish every month, or sometimes twice a month. Uh, the Louisiana Bass 
High school, the Federation of Qualified was at Toledo Bend. Uh, thanks to the president over there, Mr. Gene Hoover, he sent us out to winners with Ethan Cruz and Carlo Castiglione. Castiglione. You got it right there. You never been mad at tell. I thought I'd get that right. Uh, from Sam Houston High School, they had 17.94. Second was Dawson Andrews and Wyatt Ensminger from Central, a hometown boy where I live. 16.15. Third was Brother Martin. I thought they were talking about the school there for a second. And, and Grant Shake Schneider from Notre Dame High School and Crowley at 13.35 pounds. The big bass was Grant Burke from Ascension Anglers with 6.3. Incredible. 1.3, excuse me. And uh, Sam Houston High School, congratulations. Y'all were the team winner. They had over, almost 40 pounds at three top weights. So congratulations to them. Uh, now we're going to go to tournament. Uh, we're going to leave this. I'm just going to name some of the big guys, and then we're going to go out, and we're going to be showing the sights and sounds from the Angling for Autism tournament. Welcome to the eighth and the merge Angling for Autism. Here we are at Baltimore's Land. A little bit different than last year, but the crowd's all coming. People are out. Folks, the rain done held up. Mm -hmm. Tell me your name and what's your position. <laughs> My name is Brandy. I'm the communications and events manager. Brandy, what's your last name? Munjuri. Munjuri. That yes. sounds good. It's Italian. <laughs> I see you were very, very busy here a while ago. Yeah, yeah, we've had a and, lot of people coming in and, and support. You. Every, your merge has been in the news all year. Your yep. new division. Mm -hmm. How much it helps like this? Y'all got a lot of things. I know y'all got galas and everything raised money. But this has been one of y'all main things. It really is. You know, we have we have three, four main events a year, and this is one of them. And since 2011, when we first, the Bergerons came and said, you know, we want to do this tournament for y'all, they've raised over $300,000 for our center since 2011. $300,000. It's amazing. And um, this year, they all the money is going towards our scholarship funds so that children and families that can't access our services get a chance to come and get the therapy that they need. It is enjoyable that's come out and, and for my life and for everybody else is that when I first went to Mooney and he said, Lonzo, you think you can get some boats for a tournament? I said, yeah. I said, what's the point? And he told me, he said, it's an autism. I said, I can do more than that. I said, I'm going to try to help you raise money for this to put this on. I said, it takes money to put tournaments on. And uh, Mooney said, that's fine. He said, but I'd like to get boats. I said, we can do that. I said, no problem. I said, I know a lot of these fishermen fish with a lot of them. I fish with some older tournament fishers from years ago. Some of them's gone now. They, they dig here. But the biggest enjoyment a man can get out of life is trying to help another man with children that cannot do uh, and being able to make them come forward to what they can do for themselves, you know. And it's there's a blessing in there somewhere for somebody out of this. And hey, welcome back to the conclusion. Anger for Autism. Steve Pilata, Kumbada. Did a great job y'all did. Y'all come in second, but it's mighty close. And this is Mr. Delahousie. Yes, sir. Al Delahousie. Where you live, Al? Yeah? Okay. And Steve, I, you, uh, you legendary. Right? No, not even close. <laughs> Just make this real quick. I know y'all close and y'all made, made a long run. You said almost 60 miles? Yep. Yeah. You got a lot of tournaments coming up. I don't know exactly. What was the pattern today? And when did you find the fish? He actually found them. The pattern was grass and uh, weightless weightless plastic on the isolated grass ones. Yeah. And that, that long run, was the water clear? When all this high water and Common. everything, you yeah. found, you said you was almost to the end state up there north. Yeah, it was when close. Did you, when did you find this? Uh, <clears throat> yesterday, uh, I out. I had found them like two, three weeks ago. Yesterday, I checked. Was Still there, with all that. Congratulations, you, sir. my somebody. You know you've been promised for years. We're gonna go. We're gonna I'm gonna take it. Trip. That's all. We're gonna, we're gonna you go. scared of the black now? No, I ain't scared. Congratulations, good friend, good fisherman. Two plaques and a check for five thousand dollars. Michael over there, Jerry. Gone drawn. Gone drawn. Gone drawn. Gone drawn. I got yeah. it. We got it. Yeah. Look, both of these guys from Roseville. Yes, sir. Over there in the west part of the state. No doubt. That's where my pro drive comes from. Yeah. No doubt. Look, yes, Mike. You know, 
it's, uh, it's unexpected to have that many fish with all this high water. Y'all were fishing the west, right? Correct. We were fishing west. We were in the Lake Fossil Point area. Let me ask you this now. What was your pattern? What y'all caught y'all fishing? It was it was a series of patterns. I found through five different baits today with Jerry sticking on one main bait. He would go back and forth from one to another one he was fishing. And after that I just What water bait? It was it was anything June bug color. We were fishing muddy water. You know, and it was just a June bug color. It really didn't matter the bait. It uh, we caught on five different baits. Yeah, it was five different baits from, it, and all it is. Worm top bait, creature baits. It was creature baits, fish baits. I mean, it was. Spinner bait? Then I no. tried to spin a bait and then catch on no. a spinner bait. Well, let me tell you this. Congratulations to y'all. Y'all did a good job. We had a tremendous fill. 115 boats. Yes, sir. And uh, y'all brought home the plaque and the money. We did. Yep. And you know what? Jerry, when y'all going to invite me over there to South Fest? Tell well, me I'm going to invite you anytime you want, but can I tell you this? Like, I came in here, like, very vanilla. Like, I invited Mike, like, at the beginning of the week. And I just told him if I had to drive from dry runs in the fog, I was going to cancel out on him. But when the tournament director opened up the landings, we decided to fish. Very smart, very safe. I was yes. talking to him about it. I'm going to talk more about it on the show. This is, we're talking about the, the electric media, or, or you know, internet. He emailed all the fishermen, 115 boats, and says, hey, we're gonna give y'all a break. High water, high water would have kept y'all idling through a long place. I agree, save an hour. I agree. The, all y'all people on the west are where they're coming from. They, they started yes. to let people put in a saw, whatever. It had to be a public landing. Had people see y'all, the way in came here. Well, yesterday I went pre fish in uh, Lake Fossil and he sends me an email right before I get to the landing. He says, Jerry, I just read an email saying all land is open within boundary. And I said, Mike, I'm not going to believe you until I call the tournament director. I called the tournament director before I landed, and he said, Yes, as long as you sign in at 4 30 at Dry Ross, you open. That's what we did. Great job. Congratulations, Thank Gary, you. to you and Mike. You. Good team. Thank you. Don't Thank forget, you. My, Gary at ParadiseLouisiana.com. Anytime you want me to go, I'm, I'm, they call me the Black Cloud. Oh, really? Y'all can break that. The Black Cloud. Thank y'all. <laughs> this you is are. the winners. 2019 Hanging for Autism. Yeah. All the prize money and everything else went to the Merge Center, one of the fastest growing schools for kids that are fun. Cool. You're watching Paradise for Zealand? Yeah. One more time, the best sound system, the best guy on it, Mr. Jew, Quipper Doe. Quipper Doe, thank you, Jew. There's no better way to cool down this summer than with a delicious thirst-quenching Polar Pop Cup from Circle K. The Polar Pop Cup is the coolest way to beat the heat. Fill your Polar Pop Cup up with the flavors you crave and crushed or cubed ice. Nothing stays cold longer, so you can stay refreshed all day long. Stop in Circle K today for an ice cold Polar Pop Cup. Polar Pop Cup, only at Circle K. Take it easy. Benny's Unlimited Wash Club memberships start at $14.99 a month. Wash, rinse, and repeat every day. Join Benny's Unlimited Wash Club at one of Benny's seven locations. For generations, anglers from across the globe have put their trust in Abu Garcia because out here on the water, we know our science is your religion. Fish like a fanatic with the latest generation of Revo, featuring up to 24 pounds of max drag, Designed for leverage and power. Built on corrosion resistance and comfort. World-class adventure awaits with Revo. Abu Garcia for life. Fishing. It's where good stories come from. It's about good times and family and friends. It's about taking a couple home for dinner tonight and saving a few for tomorrow. It's all about that and so much more. To CCA, fishing is about enjoying today and making sure tomorrow is even better. To us, fishing comes with a responsibility for the resources we enjoy so much. If fishing means all that to you, then you belong with CCA.
Welcome back to the Berkeley Abu Ross here fishing report. Blake, you knew here. I got a few things wrote down. People send me every week. What's some of the fishing reports you get? Freshwater first. Um, kind of hearing a little bit around Lake Verrett, that Crackerhead area. You know, the water's heating up right now. Sun's supposed to be out this week a little bit. Um, you know, just going in there and throwing a Delta Lure spinnerbait or Thunder Jig, you know. What you what you been hearing from up Concordia, St. John, any of those places up there? Toledo Bend, that's where you just came. Yeah, there. I've been focusing most of my time on Toledo, so I haven't really spent well, too much. Well, what's some of the folks? Somebody want to go up there because y'all know you sh they catch them sackle. Yeah. Um, this time of year they catch them sackle. Sometimes the sackle move in shallow water this yeah. time of year. But what 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 are you? If you was going to Toledo Bend tomorrow and start fishing, the weather's changing, and we got, yeah. we got cold fronts, bluebird days, what would you fish at Toledo Bend I'd, and how? Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd probably spend my time somewhere around Mid Lake, um, you know, or maybe even north towards that Blue Lake area. A lot of big fish been coming up around that area. The water's still high around that 170. Um, you can still catch some big fish up there, and I'd just put that Delta Lure Thunder jig in my hand and start going around up there, throwing around that grass and seeing if I can't catch me a big one. Too windy right now for top water baits? Or, you know, top water baits is too under. It's just a little cold. No calm I bait. mean, you, you know, I've heard of some people up there throwing top water baits, but that water temperature when I left Saturday, no, Friday, I mean, it was, uh, it was in like 49, 51 at the high. So it was dropping. So a little, probably a little cold up there for it. But down here, I'm sure with that water being around 60, you can yeah, catch more, you know, a frog know. or something. People try having a hard time finding grass. You know, in Delacroix, where we found grass, we found bass and yeah, and in and, uh, and redfish. Okay, uh, speckled trout. We're out in them lakes, but that wind starts blowing, it muddies them up. They go down. So. You just gotta check the weather. That's where the best ports I'm getting right now. Still the Delacroix, Hopedale. I'll be getting some from the Lodge. I'm going tonight. I'm going to stay with Lord Landry and then some of them other ones. Uh, some of them guys from the folk people. I'm going to, <laughs> going to eat and have fun. I'm going to the Lodge. I'll find out if I'm a black cloud them. I have never black cloud Lord, Lord Landry. He gonna find fish somewhere. So he had a little, Bad trouble with with the electrical pop at camp right now, but uh, Lord, I'm coming. I, I'm, I'm counting on you to put some fish in there. Uh, you saw my black cloud trip. I seen a lot of people. I talked to some people at the Ducks Unlimited Bank in the Southwest. What are they doing? They riding in their cars and they going in the rice fields and place they hunt. And when that water and rain and the drains are running, they standing on the bank with a jig. Okay, or shiners, yeah. and they catch some of the biggest sackle they've caught all year. You, you, I, I have a couple pictures with Slate and them, but uh, Gunner, Captain Gunner, he he was over there telling me. He said, "Gary, you need to come." I'm telling everybody, if you own some sackle, and you you within an hour and a half, two hour battery, you call me. I'm coming. I'm coming during the week, or whenever. Call me any day but Monday. Uh, on Sundays, I'm on church, but after I get out of mass, I come. So just let y'all know, I'm, that's my fish report. I'm not getting any reports from up in the northeast, uh, and people are just getting through with their hunting. Uh, they got a lot of people getting ready for turkey season. Yeah. So we're going to be bringing you something on the wildlife and fish. We're talking about uh, turkey season coming up next month. Uh, in the hunting season, well, another thing, I got a picture right here from, from my, my good buddy Kenneth Hayes. Him and Lee Costell and Chris Ang Angel, they still killing a few bunnies, but this time it was cottontails. He said, you know, they, most of these rabbits they kill in the fields yeah. were cottontails, and, and they, he forgot, he said he forgot how fast they move. It ain't like them big swamp they rabbits. Yeah. They move too. So uh, later on, uh, we're going to be bringing y'all a, a couple of these rabbit hunts that are still going on. I'm going to bring y'all some of the best rabbit hunts we ever had. I'm going to give Chris a chance to look it up on YouTube or where we got. But we had some great rabbit hunts in our year. This ain't been a good year for me at anything so far. No duck and uh, ain't killed a rabbit yet. I got a squirrel hunt I got yet to do. So y'all can stay too far as hunting. Going around, take 
Tommy Vidrain is still doing everything at Grand Isle. And uh, Tommy's fishing a, a swim bait by Outcast Lures. He's fishing the rocks in the back. The wind plays havoc on him, okay? He ain't catching a whole lot, but when he do, he's catching the big ones. Uh, I was watching on TV where Kennedy won that, that elite series. He, was, he had a swim bait to come out of Bass Pro. thing was that long. Yeah. He was catching those big, bigger fish on. Big fish. So, uh, another thing Tommy was saying that when they got fresh shrimp, there's still a way to go. Same thing in Delacroix, Hopedale. Uh, most of those people got shrimp. And uh, my, my number one spot, my lady at Island Marina, uh, Miss Angie's saying uh, people are still waiting on the causeway to get right. All uh, my buddies, buddies, Ken Lambert and them, uh, been having some health problems with the family, but they, it, the weather's just been terrible. They can't go, if they're gonna go anywhere, they're gonna be fishing, looking for bass, you know, in the coastal canal, all Mr. Go and all in those areas. But when you get that weather laid down, they can, you can catch trout in all the lakes. Lake Bourne, Lake Catherine, and you can catch redfish almost anywhere. Yeah. Still, you're gonna cross them lakes, you make sure that weather don't beat you to death. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I know I got some other reports. I ain't getting anything from the Southwest. I got the reports gonna be coming to you every week from Dines Landing and ERAF. And then uh, I'm about ready. My brother and him have been going down there with some clients. I'll be getting more reports from the area over there at Big Lake. So tournament reports, there's a lot. Remind you, when you send me a tournament report or a request for your tournament upcoming, three weeks in advance, and remind me every Sunday night on yeah. my email. What about you? You got any saltwater reports? You hearing any people? You um, doing any saltwater fishing? I do anymore? do saltwater fishing. I go. Uh, I typically just go to Reggio and go to Lake Amade area and throw a voodoo shrimp or a popping cork around. Uh, but I haven't been yet this year, so I don't know. But that's typically where I go. Well, that's good. Congratulations! Thank, thank you, you so much thank coming you so in much, to Mr. Dead Hay. Uh, thank you for getting him over here, Mr. Cabell. We're looking for you. Uh, good luck. In the autism tournament, I'll see you at the landing. I don't want to be fishing, but I'm sure I'll be there. <laughs> so you watching Paradise, Louisiana. Don't forget to come by here at Superior Bait and Tackle. Get all the baits. They'll order what you want. If they don't have it, promise you, they'll be here in weeks. You'll see them all on the counter here. And uh, one of the best places to get fish reports, and they'll show you on your hanging on a rig and say, that was yep. the best bait. Oh, they're out of them. Absolutely. Same thing with the Sackley jigs. You go to get there, tell your best one, and it's out. Yeah. Better get it back in. You watch from Paradise, Louisiana. God bless you. Come in. Paradise, Louisiana is brought to you by Circle K, Murphy Law Firm, Veterans Help Foundation, Baton Rouge Coca Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, Demco. CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Louisiana State Parks, Relief Windows, Visit Baton Rouge, and by Farm Bureau Insurance. <laughs>